Welcome back, everybody, to Rain on Your Parade with J.L. Covan. I'm J.L. Covan, and I'm here, as always, in the lovely studio in Brooklyn with producer Mike. Hello, producer Mike. Hi, J.L. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Good to see you all. How's yeah. it hanging? We're doing well. We're doing uh, YouTube's going strong. I have no idea. You, you say the audio is pretty stagnant. Yeah, it is. Okay, thanks. It's very guys. stagnant. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, just remember, guys. Unlike other people who say I could never do it, I couldn't do it without you. I'm pretty sure I could do this without my fans. I'd yeah. be doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah, we could we could do it without them. I think at Jeez. this point, um, but, except the YouTube people because they've been very good to us. No, so far. I know, but I you know I'd still like the audio people to pick up. Yeah, but what what can you do? They're ashamed of me. I think it's the thing about point. YouTube though, it splits the audience. You know, Does you have a couple it, uh, thousand people watching on YouTube, and you know. But did you see a mass exodus from audio once like YouTube started doing well? Uh, no. And right. so actually, in theory, it means that we've like added people. Yeah. All right. That's if good. you think of it like that. Yeah. As you can tell from my energy, I'm thrilled. Yeah, I can to see. To find out that all this <laughs> two decades of my life have been spent um, getting to this point. The top I see the soul searching starting early. The top of the bottom. Uh <laughs> Which is Elton John's next album title, by the way, as yeah. I'm wearing my concert shirt. Mike, I got an interesting invitation yesterday on my cell phone. Okay. A 35th birthday party. Oh, that's right. You did. <laughs> yeah. I thought I was going to be like, JL, you're getting scammed. Oops. Accidental <laughs> mass text. Ignore. <laughs> that's spam. <laughs> Bots. Uh, yeah. 35th. Is it on your 35th? Is that your yeah. 35th? Yeah, my 35th is on a Friday night, August 30th. Um, so I am, I mean, I'm going to be a real terror to be around for the next two and a half weeks or however long it is because I get birthday blues like you wouldn't believe. Really? Oh, big time. I hate my birthday. But, and this is also one of the reasons I hate it is because, so I, I saw that you're coming. I appreciate that. I'm ha happy to have you. But, as soon as I sent the invitation out, I mean, my birthday is Labor Day weekend, usually, and the the peak of hurricane season, which does affect us in New York from time to time, even though, you know, houses don't usually blow apart. But We're in trouble if skyscrapers start getting ripped open by hurricanes. Trouble. Yeah. I mean, so, we, I, but it always, there's always rainstorms. People are not as excited to go out and blah, blah, blah. The minute I sent that thing out, I had like three people that were like, oh, I'm out of town. I'm like, oh, of course, it's Labor Day weekend. Why wouldn't you be out of town? Every year of my life, same fucking story. So, but I'm happy that you're going to come. Well, if you know one thing, I got nowhere to go and no one to be with. I know. So. Are you going to bring Laura? Uh, should she come? Yeah, she can. It's up to you. I don't, you know. I'd love to. I haven't seen her in a while, but yeah, no, I, I like, I, I, sometimes I like, like it's, it's, it's like when people are asking me after the pandemic, it's like, Oh, did she come on the road with you? I go, we were, we were together 24 hours a day for a year. Mm -hmm. That's like nine years yeah. of, of normal relationship time. You're cramming in a lot. Yeah. yeah. So I always save her my time to just get out by myself. Uh, okay. Well. Um, but no, maybe I'll bring her. But I also am bringing her to 11 Ranger games for her birthday present. Is that official? It's or Her birthday is uh, this Wednesday. Happy birthday, fellow Virgo. Or is she is a... Vir no, it's because don't they go like 20th, 21st to 20th, right? Like uh -huh. each Because, yeah, I'm a Virgo. I'm in, I guess, yeah, it is an in-between. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't do astrological signs, but uh, I am a Taurus, which I think means I'm an asshole. <laughs> uh, but... Yeah, so the Ranger game, like I said, though, she's actually going to 10. And if she can only go to nine, you know who's getting that. That's right. Who's, I'm excited. Who's, who's first replacement <laughs> for, uh, for, uh, I'm for getting my, ticket. I'm getting my, uh, Mark Stahl jersey ready. Yeah, that's, wow, that's like 2010. <laughs> yeah, that's when I was in high school, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, but anyway, I'm excited for the party. Um, you said in your invitation. Yeah. And I felt, I felt subtweeted. Don't look like a slob. Wasn't you. Trust me. Okay. I subtweeted somebody else, not you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Guys, we fuck. Not dressing uh, no, not the way them they either. should, huh? Not them either. No, they'll be fine. <laughs> I ha But there, I have friends of mine for sure. Because it's my 35th. I kind of want to look nice. You know, I know it's August, so it, it kind of hinders what I can wear because... You can't really go too hard. It's going to be fucking hot, I'm sure. Yeah. But, um, you know, I had some stuff that I've picked out and 
want to wear specifically and I have an ensemble and I don't want to show up and look like the only person that gave a shit on my birthday. It's just, you know, people dress like, you know, filth these days. See, I'm the type of person who I would wear something like absurdly fashionable and spend a bunch of money just for the gag. But that's what I'm saying. Except, to me, it's not a gag. Except, like, I just want people to look but good. But me, for me to do it, I would do it in a way that was just like, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, are you kidding me? This outfit costs three grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so you would laugh, but then all your young people would be like, yeah. Who's this guy? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Who's the old man? <laughs> I know. Oh, boy. Well, I'm looking forward to it. And obviously, I think everybody, they don't like me. My fans don't like me. That's We've firmly established that. Right. We're in a sort of hate hate relationship, mm -hmm. but they uh, they there. like you. I am happy to hear that. I so, like them too. They're so I think as nice a birthday thing. present to Mike, they could spread rain on your parade, and they could subscribe to Slickback Studios. They could. That would be a wonderful birthday gift. Slickback yeah. underscore Studios on uh, Instagram, and obviously follow the YouTube as well. Uh, that's a that'd be a very nice gift. Yeah. Thanks, jail. And now you're going to see how fucking ungenerous my fans <laughs> really are. <laughs> well, you'd figure by now they would come subscribers, over. subscribers, <laughs> it costs nothing. <laughs> Jesus, you're right, JL. Speaking of fans, oh my God, if you are anywhere, if you are listening to this Thursday morning and you are within 200 miles of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, tell them you're leaving work early. Tell the babysitter they got to get your kids. Punchline in Philadelphia, Thursday night, 7.30. My God, I need to sell tickets to this or else you will have seen my last show in Philadelphia. <laughs> One of the chains in Philadelphia. Are you teasing something here, JL? <laughs> well, no, this is this is not part of my retirement. This is uh, being fired by the, sa the state of Pennsylvania. I see. Okay. Now, punchline in Philly is, you know, think Sean Penn in Dead Man Walking. You know, I'm walking to the electric chair. This is it. <laughs> And uh, so please, Philadelphia people. And obviously, I have shows in a bunch of other cities uh, after that, like a lot of cities. Uh, so please, if you're a fan of mine or anything I do, just go to jailcomedy.com, click on the calendar. Almost all the ticket links are up there for all my shows. Um, so please, look, just I won't even go down the list of cities. Just check it out. Yeah. Just check it out. Got to check it out. It's also a good blog there and all sorts of other stuff. Um, nobody produces more untouched content well wow. jl covan i would say you and i are in uh in competition for that yeah but isn't it like <laughs> stage isn't it don't you wish there, there's something about this this entertainment business now it's like we're just normal people making what we think is good work mm -hmm. and we have enough validation to sort of say yeah we're on the right path i know yeah just enough, like I've always had just enough validation to keep ruining my life. Yeah. And, yep. but you realize there's the, the ecosystem now is like very divided. It's like either you're a superstar with so much heat, people just want to be near you. Regardless if you're that good, maybe you're good, maybe you're great, maybe you're mediocre, but you got heat. Yeah. And people want to moths to a flame, flies to shit. Yep. That's where they want to be. Or you're part of a movement, as we were talking before. And us as sort of, Left of center, normal people who still like real comedy aren't interested in being like left wing panderers, mm -hmm. but aren't interested in catering to maybe the, the comedy sensibilities of the right, which can have some funny people, but becomes its own gross pile of shit. Those are the two groups. If you have heat or if you're like a right wing mart, like perceived martyr or fighter of cancel culture. Like, right. And all these other culture warrior, culture warrior yeah. who happens to tell some jokes. Yeah. If you're not one of those two right now, very difficult to like make your, like make people give a shit. Mm -hmm. I can't make my own fans give a shit. How am I going to grow my fan base if I can't make the people who are fans, you know? Yeah. Anyway, it's a fun thing. And there's going to be a lot of soul searching. I was telling Mike at the end of this year. Um, I said to Mike, I'm going to have to figure out what I'm doing with the last five to six years of my life <laughs> after 2024. And uh, I don't know if comedy and frustration and anger and hostility is the way to go. It's called hostility. I want to be nice. I should be nice. <laughs> Jay, I'll be nice. And I said, okay, I can be nice. I can be nice. 
But then I said, I don't want to be nice. I'm going to be tough. It's called tough. <laughs> and you got to be tough. You got to be, you got to be strong. You got to be tough. You got to be wiser. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> you got to be together. <laughs> so, uh, Everybody, you know, just go check. I'm not even telling people about the Patreon or anything. Now, Half Blackface, we got one new review this week, so All we're right. back. All right. We're back. <laughs> yeah. Kenny Powers is back. <laughs> we're back. Um, but please, I keep getting told people months later, they write to me. And th- I'm, I'm not kidding, you guys. They write to me and go, oh, it took me so long. It's awesome. Yeah. Like people, and it's always like, yep. Like, I wouldn't go out on a limb like this and embarrass myself for like, this is my fifth best work. No, this is this is the shit. But check out my website, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Mike. Yes. We're going to talk, as people know now from the title, you're a baseball guy. Yeah. This actually has a tie-in to baseball. Finally, a story about baseball that I was interested in. Can you just tell the people very briefly, because I forgot the guy's name? Jaron Duran. Jaron Duran. He's a Boston Red Sox. Yes. Very now, talented. He's good. He's, on, he's like a young... Hot prospect. Oh, good. For, and he's good. Oh, great. And and you know what? When in Rome, he was probably thinking, I'm in Boston. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Me. The, the last, I think, definitely the last baseball team to integrate. I think possibly the last professional sports team to integrate. Is that right? That sounds that sounds familiar. That's that. Definitely the last baseball team. Yeah. I think they might be the last team in general in sports. Duke? Duke basketball? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fine, Grant Hill. <laughs> um, and there were one, there were black people before Grant Hill. Obviously, it's just a joke. It's just a joke, guys. Um, well, Boston. I've always joked. I did a thing when I went to Boston. That was one of my first shows after the pandemic. And I said, the Boston accent. What do you think the most racist accents in, in the world are? And I said, number three, um, Southern. Mm. American Southern. Right. Naturally. Number two, say they freaking. <laughs> That's my number two. I hear that thick white South African Dutch shit. I'm like, oh boy. Yeah, yeah. That guy is not a fan of <laughs> he, the blacks. He's got a whip with him. <laughs> yeah. And number one, I said was people who sound like they're from the South, but live in the North. And I remember thinking that when I saw Eight Mile, Kim Basinger was playing oh, yeah. his mind. When they, when the, when the, the Southern trash yeah. accent never leaves you, even though you're like second generation yep. Michigan, yeah. that's the most racist. Yeah. There was, there was one time I was, I was working, doing a gig in Columbus, Ohio yeah. and I ate at a waffle house there and the waitress had a Southern accent. And I remember thinking, I'm in Ohio. Yeah. What the hell's going on? I'm not in the South. Right. <laughs> but it's just, you know, the trash is its own accent. Yeah. It just sounds like, you know, Southern. Right. And, uh. And I said, look at that, Boston. You can't even make the top three. You know why? Because you can't pronounce the hard R. (laughs) And then there was this murmur of people getting it. And then that wave of laughter. And I said, I got to quit comedy. That Mm should have been much quicker. Such started your soul searching. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But anyway, so he said the F word. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm assuming. They said he used a homophobic slur and we're... we're, um, we're assuming that was not the wrong pronouns or the word queer or even homo. He used the F word. Homo is like, I mean, that's that's light fair at this point. Yeah, you know? everybody, that's Jersey Mike talking. <laughs> I'm not just saying. Mike, Mike producer Mike. That's <laughs> Jersey Mike made an appearance. Um, I, I wanted to talk about this and I wanted to also, uh, teaser guys, I'm going to rank the slurs on this episode. So, I mean... You know, that 15 minute drop off that YouTube shows. Not today, yeah. YouTube. They're staying for the whole show. <laughs> um, but I wanted to talk about this because what bothered me more about that, he apologized. He gave a robust apology, whether he whether it's the political thing to do or he felt it. He gave a very like I used a he, he said something like a, a horrible word or a horrible, disgusting word. He gave like a full he suspended two games. The comments on the post on Facebook were what made me think, maybe we can talk about this today. Because the comments were, one of the guys was like, only difference is I wouldn't have apologized. Right. And the majority of the comments, you know, it's one of those posts with thousands of comments. The majority that I saw seemed to be supportive, if you can say that, or 
society's becoming so soft because the guy was heckling him. Mm -hmm. And I would have no problem if he said, fuck you, motherfucker, or blah, blah, blah. But he went, he went to a certain place. And I want to talk about that when we come back because I've had this discussion with many friends over the years about the F word and where it ranks and why it's a bad word, mm -hmm. um, despite what philosopher king Dave Chappelle might tell you. <laughs> so when we come back, we're going to be talking the F word. And we're back, everybody. Mike, how was that break? Fantastic, as it always is. Yeah. Well, um, we realized over the break you might not be able to see what's on my shirt. It's an Elton John farewell concert tour shirt. Floor seats, Newark, New Jersey, hmm. 800 a pop. Mm -hmm. Not worth it. But I saw a legend. Yeah. I saw, all I could think looking around that concert was you, you, take, you take stock of the people that are at the concert. And unlike other shows I've been to, where I'm like, well, this looks like the cream of the crop. In Jersey, I was like, this looks like irresponsible people spending too more than they should on concert tickets. <laughs> it's probably true. Yeah. Look, I'm just like, what are you, what are you doing? You, you should be up there or, or at home. Elton, I mortgaged my house. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wave to me. Yeah. He's, he's really turned into producer Mike just dropped, dropped a ball. racket ball. Yeah, so, it's a pink, 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 I guess yeah. the break isn't over for Mike. My bad. Is that your way of stopping me from doing my acclaimed Elton John impression? <laughs> no, I'm just a klutz. What can I say? All right. Well, <laughs> guys, speaking of Elton John, we're talking about the F word today. Yeah. And that's a little irreverent humor because this is going to be a respectful discussion. Um, I've had many discussions about slurs in my life. And nobody ever really defends the N word unless they're Morgan Whalen fans. At which point they're like, eh, so what? Mm -hmm. Right. But normally it's true. Hey, what's the big deal, guy? Right. Normally, like that's when I knew we had entered into a new world. When he, like, when there's one thing, it's like, okay, so we made a joke. I don't give a fuck. The liberals want to cancel everybody. But I felt we had this understanding in civilized society, not, not the dregs that like MAGA lives in, but mm -hmm. the civilized society that like, oh, that is a cancelable offense or a partially cancel. Like, take a break. Yeah. It's not, it's not end your career. Yeah. Let's take a break though. Do yeah. some work. Meet with Al Sharpton and you're back. Yeah. Yeah. No break. Number one album. Like there was, there was a, there was a zero break. It was just like, oh, they're trying to cancel somebody. La, 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 la. Doesn't matter why. La, 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 la. Yeah. And, and it's like, that feels like we've crossed, we've crossed a, a place in society where now there is no sacred space that like, that that side won't be like, when you try to cancel, I kick into high gear. It doesn't matter what they're being canceled for. And unless they run child sex rings at a pizza shop. Yeah. Obviously then you- It's a bridge too far. Right. You cancel, you cancel on that. F fictional stories, you'll get canceled by the right. Yeah. But other than that, facts, no. Facts cannot cancel me. Yeah. And it, uh, I mean, I guess Mel Gibson is an example of somebody who has really weathered the storm of both anti-Jewish. He's the only, is he the only guy still living in mainstream thanks to Mark Wahlberg <laughs> keeping him around as a mentor? Uh who who did the double-barreled N-word and anti-Semitic stuff? Um I mean was Braveheart top of mind, was Braveheart that good? <laughs> it's good. Was it get away with anti-Jewish well, and he, black dude, stuff? Dude, he did it. He did it at like the peak of his that was like right after the the Passion of the Christ. Wasn't Do you it? think that's what helped him? Do you think? I think he fought, found the blueprint that Donald Trump is following. It's like if you get the Christians on your side, yeah, you, you know, it, you'll almost feel biblical in terms of how, you know if the God is on our side, who can be against us? Well, I, you know, I think that the Mel Gibson thing is at the very beginning of people like you had. It was a new thing to think about the fact that like everybody was recording you at all times, right? Um, not excusing the behavior, but also I think the fallout of that he was like he was he had alcohol problems. I think he was like going and trying to get that taken care of or whatever. Like I don't think it was as simple 
as I mean, I do think he's an anti-Semitic guy. Did he, and like say whatever. The, he said the N word, right? When he talked about it, wanting his wife to be raped by a pack of. Yeah, he, just, he did. Yes, he said the N word. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He didn't say African Americans. That would actually uh, no, be I don't hilarious think so. if he said that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't think he. I don't think he said that. No. I, 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 did he call? Did he say moon cricket? Was that the? I think that was just you, you're in your dreams. No, I thought. But I remember that thing being bad, and I remember. Yeah. I remember it being like like to to the point where I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> Even at that point, I had such like a. I didn't. I don't have a weak stomach at all for any of this stuff, and I right. was just like. Oh boy, that that's gonna hurt tomorrow. <laughs> you know, the, the truth is, I was not paying attention enough because I had heard him. I remember Passion of the Christ comes out, and a lot of critics loved it, made a lot of money, but some tons critics, of money. Yeah, some critics were like, "It's it's anti-Semitic." I right. was like, eh, "It just feels like they're doing the Bible story." Mm-hmm. And I was like, I, "Hey, if that's how you feel, I'm not telling you no. I wouldn't do the like no, yeah. no." I can't speak for Mel Gibson. I can't speak for, I can only speak of my own knowledge and what I'm seeing and how I interpret it. And then he comes out saying, you know, yelling at a police officer that the Jews start all the wars. And I was like, well, (laughs) it seems we have some circumstantial evidence that, that maybe Uh, uh, the film, some of those film critics had a point. uh, What a, what a lunatic. Yeah. That was so nuts. But then Mike, I saw Oppenheimer and I thought, hmm, counterpoint. (laughs) 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 so um the point is i saw apocalypto after that so i was clearly not contributing that's a tough watch it's good though i thought it was really good i i just remember being like very violent it's like a very violent and and uh the dead language because it's not hispanic right Right, he went from Aramaic to like ancient Incan or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Aztec. Yeah. Um, Apologies to any listeners who are Incan or Aztec if I got the language, if there's a different name for the language. Um, But the point is we're just going through like a temporary history of things that, you know, Millie Vanilli, of course, got famously canceled for lip syncing. Well, that was justified, I think. But then... That's not like they if didn't Millie say Vanilli anything crazy. Had, it's just like... If Millie Vanilli had said racial slurs with their own voices... They'd still be performing today. Yeah, probably. So sorry, Millie. I know Vanilli is not with us anymore. But um, the F word has now gotten into this place, the homophobic slur for anybody going F word. Yeah. Um, it's gotten to this device. It's an oddly divisive place. I remember I used it. I'm going to just confess. I think we've talked about this. I know confess. I used it in like middle school and yes. high, probably even in high school. I've used it even into my 20s, I'm sure, to be honest about it. I mean, okay. And by the way, your 20s were like my 30s, bro. So <laughs> kind of late into the game if you're really thinking about it. Definitely. Yeah, I'm stopped, not proud of it. I stopped at 21. You were fucking 11. <laughs> That's And I'm not even a woke dude. Yeah, yeah. So, But I went to a liberal arts college, which really earned its liberal, liberal name because they had Queer Week. Mm-hmm. And I was always like, me, Mr. Catholic boy, walking around my campus, lifting weights, thanking the Lord. Yeah. And like every week for, I think it was called Queer Pride Week, I think it was called. I think queer was involved, so I'm not saying that flippantly. But then you'd see, like, you'd wake up the next morning and, like, the campus was chalked in various things. And I was like, Jesus sucks dicks. Yeah. And things like that. And I was like, well, that's not going to get your point across. Yeah, yeah. And now, of course, you learn, you live and you learn, and you're like, well, I can see why they'd be hostile to the Christian faith. <laughs> you know. I thought you meant that, that Christians were doing, like, were, I misunderstood, but now I'm with you. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Okay. Everybody else is with me. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's saying something with my fan base. Yep. So, but I think the, immer- it was almost like an immersion therapy, or as the right would call it, brainwashing. But it was like, I left college not knowing that I had become a more accepting person. Mm. But when I was watching TV with three high school friends, three close high school friends, as I do Cornell West fingers, as I do, you know, I'm going to make a point, brother Mike. And we were watching TV and one of my friends referred to somebody on TV laughingly as, oh my God, look at that. Yeah. He didn't use the full one, you know, which is, that's harsher. I think we can both agree. I, I deem them both crimes. With OT? With OT yeah. is like, who you you meant it. Yeah, yeah. But and I stopped and I I didn't even realize this at the time. It was my first year of law school, and I said, eh, can we not say that? 
And I wasn't trying to be a hero. There's nobody else around. It was my three closest friends. Um, and they're like, what? I don't, I don't mean it like he's gay. I don't mean it like he's gay. Yeah. Like I wouldn't say, and then became the thing. And, and I don't, I'm not saying any of these guys are bad people, but there was this like, I don't mean it. Like I wouldn't say that if somebody were gay, I wouldn't say that around somebody gay. Right. And I guess that's a way of saying like, I'm not trying to hurt feelings, but I just, when I see something bad or stupid or pathetic or awful, I just like to call it gay. <laughs> that's all. Yeah. Um, and so we had this long discussion and of course it got fought like within 10 minutes. It was like, Jay, are you, are you gay? I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> like, wait, what? <laughs> like nobody ever says that if like a white person stands up against like a clearly racist act, nobody right. goes, what is your granddad black? What's that about? Well, I mean, maybe it does in some places, you know, maybe, but you know, you get what I'm I saying. I do. Like, yeah, yeah. I get your in point. Other words, yes, of course. I wasn't trying to stifle your point. No, no, I get it. Hey, uh, it's okay to stand up to to bigotry, even and and I think it's helpful. I wouldn't be hanging around knowingly with people who are like hardcore homophobes, except right. for my dad. R.I.P. Right, you well, turned ninety th- turned ninety three yesterday. What are you gonna do? But like I always say, born in nineteen thirty one in Haiti. Right. If you're if you're if you're looking for a flag bearer during Pride Month, it ain't my dad. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, huh? but the the we had this long discussion and of course it got to the, are you gay? And I was like, no, yeah. like I'm just telling you it's a slur. It's a bad word. It's like, I'm talking to like, I use this example. I go, there are gay men and, and gay women who have probably heard that word as one of the last things they've heard on fucking earth. Mm. Yeah. Right. Like it's a great point now. Yes. Have black people been treated worse historically in this country? Sure. Because you can't hide that except if you're me. But <laughs> other than that, you, you can't, you can hide, you know, Johnny Weir. No, he can't hide. Yeah. It. But most, if you choose Rock Hudson, Rock yeah. Hudson, I just watched right. a documentary on him. Looked a lot like Miles Teller. We got to find out if he's Miles Teller's dad. But so anyway. all signs point to no. <laughs> no, I know. But how, how dedicated was he to covering up? Uh, also, point. Miles Teller, probably born after he was dead. Yeah, but yeah, definitely. Okay, that's probably a bigger definitely. <laughs> People have faked their way to kids, but they haven't, they haven't overcome death and homosexuality that's right. to father a child. Right. So uh, the point is, we got into this discussion. I remember one of my friends was like angry at this point, and he's evolved a lot, but he was like angry because- that you told him not to ask but him I, not to No, say it? he wasn't even the one I was telling. Huh. Another friend was like angry about it. Like I was like some fucking liberal arts loser who'd been like brainwashed. And I was just like, I don't know what to tell you guys. Like it's a slur. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter. You're around me and I don't like it. And whether I'm standing up for people or whatever, I don't like it. Please don't use it. Yeah. That's all I'm asking. I'm saying, and maybe you'll understand over time why it's a bad thing. And, and, and I didn't unfriend anybody because I don't think we had a discussion where anybody was like, nobody was defending it. Like what? They're gross. Right, <laughs> you know what right, I mean? Right, it was more right. of like, I'm just using the word. Right. I don't mean it. I'm not a hateful person. Right. So, th- so there's degrees obviously, but there's become this sort of movement now um, where it's like, and Dave Chappelle, we got to bring up Dave Chappelle here because when I saw him on Broadway and I wrote a blog about this, it got shared a little bit. Sorry to keep pimping my own stuff, but. Um, are you, I'm the greatest gift to culture that we have. So you can't, di- I'm not going to dim my own light, Mike. Okay. So, except when I quit comedy in six months, but the point is, the point is Dave Chappelle, good guy talks a lot about the gays and trans, but he did a bit. And this was 2019. I believe I saw his show on Broadway. He had like a two week residency in broad on Broadway. And I liked most of the show, but then he got to this point where he said, the standards and practices at the Chappelle show had said to him, uh, yeah, yeah, right. we don't want you to use. And he instead, because he's tough and brave, scream the word. Ah! Yeah. Like that. And I, I, I felt a little gross because I was like, I mean, what's, what are you proving here? Yeah. Like you don't care about their humanity as much like, but that makes you real. He comes from this and I've, I've had friends like this. He, I think he comes from this space of, as a black person in America, I'm at the top of the oppression totem pole. Mm-hmm. And not only do I, 
I, I can respect other forms of oppression, but I don't really have to respect them as much because I'm king of oppression. Uh-huh. Okay. Which is, you know, my next album title. Spoiler. But next and last. Yeah. It will end uh, like the Eminem show. It's just a gunshot. <laughs> but he went into this thing and he said, but you let me, he said, you let me say the N, he's, you know, let me say the N word, but I can't say that. And the woman said, well, well, Dave, you're not gay. And then Dave said, but I'm not an N word either. Wrong. You just failed the SAT analogy. It's not, and he was being either, either he's not as smart as people think, or he's being intellectually dishonest. And because the idea is, of course, gay, gay slur, black, black slur, not black. Well, I'm not a black. No, no, no. You're crossing right. the, the analogy. And I, I made that point in the blog where I said, you know, maybe there will be a, or I think the other two may have just started on HBO Max or Comedy Central. And I was like, here's a show from a gay writer that's very funny, uses gay slurs flippantly. There it is. There's your answer, Dave. There's your answer. They're not going to let them use the N-word. I can guarantee you that. (laughs) Right, right, right. So, right. but (laughs) what what bothered me in the crowd, first of all, I found it intellectually dishonest. He's a smart comedian. He's he's thoughtful on many things. But that was when I started to see this tipping point because he hadn't become the mega anti-trans warrior yet. Yeah. But I said that bothered me. Still such a weird pivot. And then when the crowd, the crowd reaction is what really told me because there were no laughs. There were a lot of black men going, "Mm mm-hmm. And there were a lot of white guys probably putting down their New York Post to go, you see? Yeah. (laughs) You can't take away all my slurs. Wait, we got to go out to the New York Post? I mean, come on. It's a fun read. (laughs) But I will. So, so that. Made, that's when I started to see Dave Chappelle, the early stages, which would rapidly grow, of culture warrior Dave Chappelle. Right. And it was another instance of this need to defend the F word like it belongs to, to people. And, and I remember, um, and then we'll, get, we'll rank the slurs soon, and I'll get your input on this and your thoughts, although I think you're going to be probably largely aligned with me, if not completely. Yeah. But- I had a, a discussion with a friend one time who's who sort of veers into that black black straight black men are the, actually the most oppressed people and you can't you can't tell me I can't say things <laughs> I've earned I've earned the right to just look down on other mm-hmm. groups who are trying to steal the oppression spotlight yeah but he he had brought up you know he had said to me uh, well did you see how fast Meyer, Myers Leonard got fired from the Miami Heat. You know, the owner is Jewish. He said a Jewish slur and he was gone. Uh And I said, right. And? (laughs) (laughs) And I said, I said to him, I said to him point blank, you can't be mad at another minority. Obviously not a racial minority, but a minority. Obviously a very discriminated against class of people. Uh because they flex the power you wish you had uh-huh. doesn't make them the bad guy. Uh-huh. You should want that power too, but don't blame them because they have, they've built that power. However, they've built it, you know, controlling the media, Hollywood, money, money, money. You right. get what I'm saying, Mike. No, that's a joke, everybody. <laughs> We're trying to broaden the, the audience. Bro. Jail coming after my people. <laughs> no, but, 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 but in all seriousness, I was like, you can't be mad at at them for responding to bigotry and flexing against it. You want that same power? That's it. That's you should. You should want that and you should have that when somebody but you can't blame some other group for doing what you wish you want could do or want to do. Right. And I said to him I was like so if Myers Leonard, Myers Leonard I think was the name, if he he said the K word on a video game and he was out. And the K word is also that's like heavy duty. Well, I mean, I mean we're going to rank when but, I reveal the rankings, yes. you're going to see just how heavy duty it is. Yeah, but it's got the double K. Yeah, the ka-ka. yeah. So, um, I said, do you think if Myers Leonard, who was a white player, for those of you who don't know, so if you th- do you think Myers Leonard, if he had said the N word, especially with a hard R, because that's the only comparable, there is no soft K 
in 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 the Jewish slur. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> so if you'd said it with the hard R, which would be the equivalent, do you think the NBA wouldn't have ushered him out very quickly as well? Well, we I was ha- like, we have a sample size for that. We do. Donald Sterling? No. Sure, Donald Sterling. But I would say now, if you're telling me now, if he had brought, if he was talking to me about the NFL, I'd say you have a point. Right. Uh, Riley Cooper. Yeah. The, right. But the NFL. Who I don't think is even in the NFL anymore. But, but he didn't get kicked out for that. that yes, you're right. You know, right. once his 40 time got slower, it was like, get out of here, racist. Yeah, right, right, right. And now he's <laughs> and now he's working backstage at Morgan Wallen, Graylin concerts. Yeah. But if you told me the NFL, I'd say much different story. Yeah. And you I could, would agree with that. That's you could right. t- because that is a conservative, old military sort of some like, racist American yes, quote unquote. American in the MAGA. Yeah. 1950s, 1840s kind of way. Yes. But it wasn't. It was the NBA. Right. And I was like, no, 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 no. Because you can't give me an equal example. You couldn't possibly tell me that if if Myers Leonard had done that, said a black slur, that he would have been like, well, let's just hear him out. Right. In the NBA, give me a break. So- Can I just say that yeah, yeah. too? As uh, it's credit to Miles Leonard, I do think that he actually, d- even though- I think he- it was Myers- my yeah, Myers Leonard. Yeah. What did I say? Miles? Miles. Whatever. Myers Leonard. Um uh I, I had seen through the grapevine, I guess, that he was actually like going to fucking temples and stuff after that and really felt bad about what he said. Well, when he discovered the Jewish ladies are very busty, he's like, <laughs> All right, I'm not anti Semitic no more. I have a feeling he wasn't anti Semitic. Said no, something I, really I fucking know. dumb. Of course. But I and I think that also that is that needs to be part of these discussions. Sure. Because I do think people shouldn't always be judged in their, their like, I don't even want to say worst moments because I'm sure it's not his worst moment, but like dumbest moments. Yeah. Like careless moments. How about this? Dumbest plus worst. Their durst moments. Their durst moments. Whether we're talking <laughs> Fred or Robert, yeah. it's a very insulting term. <laughs> right. But I do think you should- I did get- it all for the real estate. <laughs> the real estate. You, there, there, it should be- So I can murder my date <laughs> and stick it in her ass. Stick it in, I'm sorry. I just do think it should Nookie be- Nookie by uh, Fred Durst. You're I won't talking even, over it. I it's won't even try. Bit. I won't even It's a great bit. I'm done. Please, Mike. I'm just saying, I think in situations like that, I think it should be, I don't want to say commended- because, you know, but we're all going to say the wrong thing at some point. We, we all, you know, you were talking about sort of the moment where for you, you made the shift to where like yeah. saying gay slurs was, I don't even want to say offensive to you, but like gross to you. It was, you know? No, it, and it was like, it was, it was a maturity thing. I right. thank Williams College for being an open place where, yes, I still don't like chalkings that are like saying yeah. vulgar things. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, the community that they created at Williams, which allowed for that, was also a place where you would meet other people and they could be themselves. And they there was no like, you know, you, you get what I'm saying. Like I do, yeah. And that helped me grow. And it wasn't even like a, I didn't have to go to classes or um, sensitivity training. It was just I was open to it. And, and all of a sudden, one day, I was just like, stop saying that. Well, Not that, because somebody right. had reprimanded me. Nobody ever did. But I just found myself in a place where I was like, it's a gross word. And like I said, yeah, yeah. you know, Matthew Shepard was, I believe, murdered while I was in college. Yeah, yeah. When you hear things like that, you're like, that should make you reevaluate how you talk, how you treat people, how you see people. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. And I think so. I don't know what it's like in school now, but I can say that. Like, oh, they've gone too far. As, <laughs> <laughs> I can also say the that. drag queens are running the show. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I. Anyway, <laughs> I could just say that I, when I was a kid, um, I certainly I had access to some gay people. My mom had a couple people that she worked with um, that were gay. And this was at the, during the time of like AIDS and all this sort of stuff. So there was some education about it. But as a kid, you don't know a ton of gay people. Uh, and then you're just hanging out with your with your buddies. Especially me and the and- B-52s. Yeah. Sign says. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wow. <laughs> I mean, when I was a kid, you started seeing more gay stuff in culture. You started yeah. seeing like Will and Grace and you started seeing, uh, you know, things like that. So there was a little more of an understanding uh, about it. And I always like I had that same sort of mindset, too, where I was like, I would never call. I would never call a gay person that. But like when I'm with my friends, whatever. And I felt that way 
un- until yesterday. I, no, not that, but maybe like the, a decade ago. I got you. You know, and then I think the thing is, you do start getting to like that information. Like we were saying, Myers Leonard. I agree. With your you, by your the way. knee-jerk reaction is to be like, "Oh my god, what a loser!" Pandering, going and speaking to rabbis and whatever. It, it, it's it. It's difficult to not have that reaction, but I feel so differently in the last decade of having gotten closer to many gay people in my life and then eventually trans people or people that kind of identify as as um, they them. And, you know, when those people are in your life, you're way less likely those monsters. You mean? <laughs> no, thanks, Mike. <laughs> but we I mean, even one step at a time for J.L. Covan. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Even just out of the studio, like Ronnie, my, my sidekick on my show is is openly gay. Uh, she has a um, and her a, but her political opinions are so abhorrent <laughs> that we, we 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 don't even care. <laughs> We're so focused on enough. Her radical <laughs> agenda. She is a communist, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so, so like, like that, she's become a, a close confidant of mine. Good, great friend, like a little great. sister. Now he's going to rat me out. No, I'm just saying it's like when those people, there's going to get... be a scene between <laughs> us at your birthday function. <laughs> no, you guys will get along. I fun. know. Um, I do think that when you have more of those people in your life, it becomes a lot easier to, to say like, well, I'm not going to say this when I'm not around this person either, because how am I going to look this person in the face and be like, yeah, I say it and, and I, but I don't mean you. I just mean my friend Jack, who like, you know, uh, that's why I shit tell all my side pieces. I'm not going to say I love you. <laughs> how can I then say that to Laura? <laughs> right. So, she doesn't listen to my podcast, so I can just say these right disgraceful jokes, people. So jokes. that's that's what I would say. Like if if we're using Myers Leonard as like the 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 front of this experiment here, yeah. Having spent enough time learning more about if we're talking specifically gay stuff, you know, um, pride and sort of like the Stonewall Rebellion and just what people have gone through, and you can say the same thing about black people, like the N word is is heinous. And I'm sure I've used it in my life, uh, you know, but in just save yourself and say while singing rap songs. Th- well, definitely, which I don't do anymore. Okay. And now I now I uh, now I replace the word with people when I say something Okay, like when I'm going through the Go word with neighbors just, like Montel or, Jordan yeah, for all right. my neighbors who got much flavor. <laughs> right. this is how we I do. always replace it. Uh, like I just I, I got to a place where like I, I grew up where there it wasn't, you know, listen, I had I had adults in my life who used that word and as a kid it was something that like you definitely never used around black people but to say that it was i never heard it or i never used it as a kid um to probably try to be funny uh i definitely did there's no question about it and i feel bad about that now i really do because now i have again i have more people in my life that uh, you know to look somebody in the face uh, a person of color that i that I is close to me and say like, yeah, I did. I, you know, I did say it. Um, I, I can't imagine not feeling horrible about it. Right. Just knowing how it makes people feel. I've seen people get upset by it. I've had deeper conversations with my friends of color and Fox. As they're called. <laughs> well, do you remember Drew Doughty, the, the comedian? I know that name. He was he was a little bit ahead of me do, when I was doing stand up, and Drew was like sort of in that Chappelle. He was like that kind of comedian, mm-hmm. but before Chappelle went like off the deep end. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always had so much, I so much respect for Drew. Uh, so funny and just such a smart guy. And I remember having a conversation with him one night at the time, where like as a comedian, you're still trying to get your feet on the ground, and and there was this whole conversation about like what you can say and what you can't say, and there was like a fervor about that for a long time. And one night I'm sitting at a table at one of the clubs with Drew and we're just having this conversation, like this conversation, Mm -hmm. JL, I think. And he tells me this whole story about like getting chased through his neighborhood when he was in his early 20s because he's a little older than I was. Uh, Like in his early 20s, he got chased through a neighborhood by some like Italian guy with a bat. No, I I, I did the math. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I knew exactly. I knew exactly what the weapon was. It was Vinny and the race of the person doing it. I grew up in New York City in the eighties. Right, Every other week, there was like uh, a black guy was trying to buy a cupcake, and all of a sudden, nineteen Italians chased him down. Right. So it, it was one of those situations, and um, I guess the cop came over, and then 
Drew ended up getting arrested, I guess. Uh, it was this whole like really bad like bad sure. story. And I just remember being like, damn, like like I've never heard a story like this told to me directly by somebody who I respected so much right. that I was just like not again, not that it was like a word that and I you was looked using. In your notebook for that night and said cross off the N word bit. No, but I was just, I didn't I I've never <laughs> I, I don't think I ever had an N word bit. I don't think. But I uh, there N-word, was N-word, that was a hot thing at the time though. N word scissor hands? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's good though. But no I feel like that might have been somebody's <laughs> Twitter handle at some point. So I don't think I'm making that up. Uh, maybe. But that's I mean, a that's, funny Twitter it handle. It is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. But no, so I mean that's the thing. I think that perspective matters and once you start to actually have more of these people in your life who there's a you know it, it can be all fun and games like you know i've been called guinea and wop and stuff before and i people don't know that i'm jewish so i never get cut, on the list you know? but <laughs> but i think that that's important like i really do think that understanding and that knowledge helps you stop speaking like that sure. in the future because like when my grandpa might have said some of those words when i was a kid I didn't have as many black people in my life, so I didn't think twice about it. And then you fast forward to actually having people like that in your life, hearing their stories about getting wrongfully arrested. Right. Uh, you know, it kind of dropped the ball again. It kind of puts you in this different headspace to not to understand that even just using words like that flippantly yeah. is at best in bad taste and at worst, you know, contributing to like a culture of hate. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I, I was going to say an example of that also. I remember it was very interesting when Liam Neeson, and he didn't use any slurs, but he had talked about a friend being assaulted or raped or something. I he, think I remember And this. he was talking about having these vile, yes. racist thoughts about the perpetrators or who had done it. <laughs> yeah, I remember this. And, <laughs> and, he was, but, and, and he was saying it, though, in a very reflective, open way of like, it was kind of the thing where, what was the, what was the movie where it's like, I thought we were sharing. Are we not sharing anymore? I forget if, it, if it's an Austin power. It's like, but there was, I'm forgetting the scene in the movie, but where somebody thinks, Oh, Oh, um, it's Will Ferrell in God. It's Will Ferrell in some movie, maybe the other guys or something, or one of his movies, mm. Step Brothers, whatever. You've seen one, you've seen them all. Yeah. The, the point is, are we not? Oh, old school. It was an old school in therapy. Oh, he's yes. Saying, is this not a place of trust or is this not the guy? Like, because he's giving away too much. He's sharing yeah, yeah. too much even for therapy. But I was like, Liam Neeson is kind of taking to heart this idea. Wasn't that like post George Floyd? I, um, I, I felt like he was doing I don't his, know if it was post George Floyd. It, it was probably post Trayvon. Certainly, yeah. No, but it no, was that's it, for it, sure. It's been it's in that during like, a racial yes. reckoning. Yes. And it was like, of course he got it, roasted. The and climate it was, like, was hot. <laughs> but it was like I I looked at it and said, Wow, if everybody reflected that way, sure. we'd be a better place. But of course, who's gonna do that if Liam Neeson is getting roasted on Twitter right. for doing it? Um but and that wasn't about slurs, but that was about having racist feelings. Now it was in yeah. a highly charged emotional time, but you know. Who you are when the chips are down is who you are. Good, that's a good point. You know, yeah. not if you if you revert to calling somebody an F word or an N word when they're really in a bad mood, then yeah. that's that's a little bit of who you are. Right. You know, it's good that you're not always that person, but that's in you. Yeah. And that's worth examining. But with 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 so we get to Chappelle, and I've had discussions post Chappelle with people telling me I don't use the F word uh as uh like that. I don't use it as like that. Right. And I go, oh, okay. Oh, well, great. Yeah. It all's forgiven. Um, because I don't get that defense that, that people still have. Now, two things, and then we'll get to the what everybody's waiting for. Yeah. I rank an official ranking of slurs. The official ranking. But I had to yeah. say to a friend of mine one time where I was really pissed about the Chappelle thing, and he had no qualms about he didn't use it because he was sort of a dignified, per- but but he had no he had no issue with Chappelle's point. Yeah, and I was like, and the way I put it to him is, I go, okay, so I'm going to concede something. Let's say the N word is a ten, mm-hmm. ten out of ten, horrible, worst worst thing. Let's say the K word for Jewish people is a an eight point five or an eight, and the F word is a seven because it has such a rich tradition of being used. Negatively, but not necessarily meaning the, the the specific community. But let's just play that game. 
Well, four is the level of unacceptable. Yeah. So what does it matter at that point? If you're defending the use of K or F, we don't need to talk. Like those should be, if we want to have an intellectual or a humorous discussion, like we're about to of where they rank, fine. But if you're telling me that one is not that bad, they're all beyond the line of decency and, and, and openness or whatever the word would be. Yeah. They're all, they've all crossed the line where you shouldn't use them. If you want to rank them, fine. But if you're saying that because you're part of the, the group that would be called the 10, yeah. you don't have to respect right. the seven or the eight because you're, 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 you've got the fucking racial slur immunity. But or people do feel immunity. that way. I know. And I'm you know? telling those people, you're fucking idiots. It's so annoying yeah. because it's like, I mean, the example I'll give you is how many gay people have been murdered in this country where the last thing they were hearing was, was the F word, you know, yeah. like, tell me, tell me how you have a better justification why you can throw that word around yeah. and disregard pain and trauma and other communities who, who haven't had it super easy either. Yeah. You know, yes, there might not be that historical 400 years on ongoing, but it is it is a community that the trauma is well documented. I mean, you could also argue that it's longer than 400 years and all over the world. No, no, of course. You know. Yes. No, no, but I'm just, you know, even just speaking I know. In, in yeah, America. now we're going to get now you and I are going to argue semantics of racial yes. slurs. <laughs> but <laughs> we both that we despise. <laughs> but there's 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 that and then there's this article that made me think of this today on Jaron Duran. Jaron Duran. Yeah. It wasn't that he said it that made me shocked and startled because he was in an exchange with a heckler. Mm -hmm. Maybe they pushed a button and he unloaded on the guy, whether he was saying it in a flippant way or he thought the guy was actually gay. But he used a homophobic slur. Not in Boston. Yeah. Yeah. In Boston, I feel like that might just mean like, yeah, you know, I don't like the shirt you're wearing. Yeah, right, right. But. It was the comments underneath. That's what made me think, let's talk about this. Because it wasn't one guy, because he issued an apology. Like we said, maybe it was an apology for I really mean this or I really don't want to get suspended a lot. But he gave a full-throated apology. He, he could have easily course, felt bad. Of course. You know, bad moment. Exactly. You know? Either way, he did the necessary thing for saying a bad word. I mean, Kobe, everybody's hero. Kobe Bryant got, got uh, fined, I think. For calling a ref, yeah. I think, the F word. I mean, if you think Michael Jordan didn't say it, I mean. No, no, of course. You know. <laughs> but but I'm saying, Co you know, Kobe, yeah. hey, by the way, sidebar, Kobe fans have become like the QAnon of basketball. Like yeah, they yeah. see numerology everywhere now. Like, like oh, yeah, yeah. Kobe. Great player. Not as good as LeBron. Anyway, um, it was the comments underneath because there were a lot of them. And it was a lot of, you know, it, it's like it's like the the gif of Carl Weathers and, and Arnold Schwarzenegger and Predator where their biceps yeah. come together and flex. Dylan! It's like, it's like black guy who wants to win the oppression contest, white guy who wants to say slurs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. And it was a mix. It was a black and white. It was it was it was Paul McCartney and Michael Jackson and yeah. Ebony uh, Ebony and I, no, that wasn't that was Stevie. Was that Stevie Wonder and, and Paul McCartney? Steve, Steve, right. uh, Michael Jackson. Say, and say, say. Say, 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 and the girl is mine. The girl is mine, right. Yeah. Um, so they were all going, half of the people were saying society's too soft. They view this as like, it's just words. Yeah. It's just words. And the other half were saying like, I wouldn't have even apologized. Yeah. And I was like, <clears throat> as I often do, I brought it back to Trump. Because that's what I think Trump has done. First of all, he made he made these people come out of the shadows and out of the, out of the holes that they live in, and he made it safe. And not only did he make it safe to be a hateful bigot, he branded it. That's true. You're not being a bigot. You're being a free speech guy. Yeah. You're being non woke. You're being non PC. So when I when Morgan Whalen yells the N word, is he racist or is he a free speech warrior, Mike? 
Well, yeah, and but I don't, I don't think he don't did. Know, po- he is like he and, wasn't ha- like proud of that. I don't think. But don't get me wrong. I feel like he, pay- I feel like he paid a price for about a week, and it was like a right. month after he had like fucked with the COVID protocols on SNL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I know who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's enough for me to kind of know who yeah. you are, dude. You made up your mind. Yeah, that's a it's very unlikely that these are just two coincidences, and you're actually a very enlightened fellow. Yeah, yeah right. But. To me, it was, and, and no, I don't want to mean it like it's just free speech work. Plenty of these people don't care. They don't think it's anything. Right. They're like, I've been calling people that wor- word for years. And by the way, I don't like gay people. Right. Like there's, we can't, we can't ignore the sizable segment who are like gross. Yeah. Or I don't like that. All right. And to be honest, these are people who've never even really heard the tawdry things that gay people do, because I tell you, they'd have more ammo. If they knew what went down in some of these parties, <laughs> they're One lucky night at the duplex. <laughs> they're lucky. They don't know what's happening. They just think it's two guys kissing <laughs> and they're like nuclear war ready. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but my point is we, we're not, we're, we can't even discount those people, the amount of genuine hate mm-hmm. and the bridge to making that legitimate, to making that hate political strength are the people who go, you being woke. I didn't mean it like that. Who cares? What's the big deal? And those are the people who bridge it to Trump and Trump bridges it to them so that they're only one degree of separation from the true hate, but they're okay with it. Or I don't mean it like that. So why should I respect the feelings of somebody else? You know, and they form this coalition, but it was, it was shocking to me and I shouldn't have been shocked, but how the multitude of reasons these people are being so flippant about it, how it doesn't mean anything. And yeah. it's like, yes, if he had said the N word, although I think he is a POC. Morgan Whalen? No, not more. No, the, the baseball player. Oh, Jared. Yeah. I think he's, I think he's Hispanic. Okay. Well then he might still say, it. <laughs> let's be honest. He might still say the N word. Um, my point is if you said it, would the reaction be like, uh, it's just words. Yeah. From a few of those people, they'd be still on the, it's just words or uh, what's the big deal? Yeah. But there'd be a lot more people going, no, 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 no. That's bad. Yeah. They've accumulated the amount of oppression and trauma that allows their slur to be respected by everybody. You've only done a few things and I don't like your lifestyle, so I don't have to respect it. So um, that is, uh, that's my take on that. I don't think anybody should say the, I mean, no. Gay people want to say it, say it. I remember seeing my friend Adam Sank's one man show. And when he said it, I laughed loudly. Mm -hmm. Probably a little bit of me was like, good to hear it again. (laughs) No, but it was just, it was, it was funny because he was wielding it. Yeah. Aggressively. Um, Unlike Joe Rogan. Right. Who wielded it poorly and certainly unfunnily. Yeah. In his special. But that's what his people want also. They're the people, they're exactly the people who want to hear that shit. And hey, if Joe Rogan and Dave Chappelle vouch for you using the F word, who's going to, those are my two, those yeah. are my social and comedy heroes. Right. Who's going to tell me otherwise? They say it's okay. Right. Well, it's not. So when we come back, oh, you guys thought you were getting in the second segment. When you come back, brother Mike, we're going to discuss. So is this taking place the uh, the comedy segment? This is going to be in the comedy segment. Oh, wow. Guys, we rank, and by we, I mean me. We rank the racial slurs after this final break. Two and two. (laughs) And now, from the Slickback Studios newsroom in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, here is Scott Pelley with a Rain on Your Parade special report. This is Scott Pelley. On assignment from 60 Minutes with this week's Punchdown of the Week. JL had posted on Twitter, also known as X, Mike. Yes. Since Elon Musk bought it. He was watching a Donald Trump speech and he wrote, Please pay attention to me, end quote. Donald Trump's Gloria Swanson press conference which somebody replied reminds me of Sunset Boulevard Mike I'm going to stick with you for a minute to explain this (laughs) okay Scott Gloria Swanson 
as film buffs will know, Mm -hmm. was the main character of the movie Sunset Boulevard. Yes. So this person commenting, Trump reminds me of Sunset Boulevard. Well, JL just said that. (laughs) Moron. Thank you. Scott Pelley out. Uh, We love to hear it. Scott, thanks for coming in, man. We appreciate it. It's been a while since we've seen Scott, JL. You missed him again. Well, he knew that. Well, yeah, he knew this was a, I think he knew this was an episode worthy of his gravitas. Like we were talking about, we had some jokes, but we, you know, it was a more serious topic Mm -hmm. this week. So doing some social consciousness work, but this is what everybody stuck around for. Okay. This is going to be the official slur ranking okay if you disagree with me that's fine you're okay. wrong oh okay at number nine i couldn't even come up with t- i mean i couldn't come up with 10 in terms of like yes you can come up with i wanted no more than one slur per race so you know what i mean you could have like four for black people you could have three for italians you have that you know a sort th- too confusing i don't want to do a whole it's just the best for each race yeah. okay so number nine at the bottom of the list cracker yeah Hardly offensive. Who even uses it? Yeah. So cracker, you're 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 in the you're you're in the bubble. You're in the play in tournament. Mm-hmm. Number eight. You might not like this. Any Italian slur. Oh, okay. So you just said all Italian. Yes, but where would you? And I ask you for your expertise. We obviously, and by we, I mean you, use Guinea on this show. Guinea's the big one for yeah. Vinny. Yeah. But it's also the most common, you know, Guinea T is sometimes a name for a yep. wife beater. Yeah, Guinea straps. So it's been in like a, it, it adopted some sort of, collo- a little bit of a colloquial usage. Well, no, that's like offensive. Guinea strap is like calling a, like a, a wife beater. Wife beater and Guinea strap are the same thing in the sense that they're like, what? I never, trashy I never, Guinea- I'm only saying it for this. I've never used that, but I've heard. Yeah. Like we say it growing right. up, we absolutely, right. I mean, I still call them guinea straps. That, that's, that's, oh. that's like what they were called in my house. Oh, okay. But it means like, cause, cause like, like Italians hit their wives and like that, that's what it's meant to, that's why they call it guinea straps instead of wife beaters. It's like the same kind of Yeah, you're going to kill me like your father. Come <laughs> <Yeah>. on. <laughs> Come on, you guinea brat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carlo, you piece of shit. Yeah. Um, but I feel like the ones that aren't used as much. Like what? Like WAP? And Dago? Like well, Dago is like meaningless at this point. Well, it's meaningless, but to yeah. me, that's Guido why they... Guido is worse than Dago, I think. Guido, at least people... And Guido's not even really a slur, but it's like... You but, know. but I'm saying they're like antiquated, but yeah. I still think I've never heard... And I'm sorry for saying this, if this is offending people. It's just for the purposes of this one discussion. Yeah. Dago and WAP feel like things that I only hear in movies when it's like an... In, it's, it's being used to insult Italians. Yeah. Like nobody, you could say Guinea is, is Italians N word. They've just adopted it. They don't care about using it themselves. Yeah. But actually the N word is Italians N word. Let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but those ones feel like those feel antiquated, but they also feel like they were only used as slurs. Yeah, Whereas yeah, yeah. Guinea has had this multifaceted. Guinea's got a face usage. Look. Right. Yeah. Okay. But number eight. Now, number seven, we enter the realm where I go, these are also words that are used for other things, Uh which is why they can't be top tier slurs. If they have, what is it, homonyms? Yeah. You can't, homonyms is the same same word, different usage? No, that's different spelling. Anyway, I'm using it wrong. English, elementary school English is a long time ago. I'm going to say this one for Latino people, number seven, because it's also part of a famous cleaning product. Uh Uh-huh. And if you and grew span. up, in, yeah, yeah. If you grew up in the eighties, you you would probably say that a lot. Yeah, you know, which I always found, and I always wondered. I'm like, it feels racist because, you know, in my building, the cleaning women are are Latin. So I'm like, is that was spick was spick and span? It's not racist if you say it together. <laughs> spick and span just sounds like you're identifying somebody. Eh, spick and span, yeah, Spanish. Yeah. It sounds horrible. Yeah. I, that cleaning product sounds horrible and yeah. we all had it. Yeah. And and just it's one of those things where I go, so we got rid of Aunt Jemima for good or bad. Fox News tells me it's the worst thing that ever happened. But okay, Pearl Milling Buck Company, whatever it's called, hate it. I think it was a good move. It's a good move, but I but yeah. I, I never took it as but of course, doesn't matter how I took it or somebody, but but 
they went on to something, a different one, whatever they're called now. But speaking Spanish, it's like, to me, I'm like, are we sure that doesn't have a racist origin? I, I don't know. I know, know. it's like, a, I know it's a term for meaning clean, but it's hard to separate the fact that like in the cleaning custodial profession, there are a lot of you know immigrants and Latinos in that profession. I, I would wager that it's not. Probably not. Yeah, I would wager it's like some white guy fifties. Like, well, it's spick and span. No, of course. You but, know? but where did that? My question would be, where did that come from? Well, in, in the good old days in this of this country, JL. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, white people were janitors too at one point. That's true. You know, in after the war. But like they janitored like I'm cleaning the room. Whereas, dun, 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 just janitor the right way, okay? That's all I'm saying. There's a right way to janitor. <laughs> Stop salsing while you're cleaning my room, okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you're probably right, but it's just, it's it, both humorously and also, where did that phrase come it from? It doesn't sound great. No. Yeah, you're right like about that. Like, if you said that to a 20, if you said that to Ronnie today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, just... Ronnie's Ronnie's got a pretty. All right. She's not that. Uh, she doesn't have baby ears, which is All nice, right. Ron but... Kuby always on defense <laughs> counsel for Ronnie. We can't even joke. Um, this, this is a no joke. An eighteen year old. Jo- an eighteen year old. Yeah, maybe. You just go. Uh, could you just grab the spick and span for me? I'm gonna clean the room. Yeah, Excuse yeah. me. Uh, yeah, Rosa, now, I yeah. think JL wants you in here. What are you doing? <laughs> Why are you asking her? You just said no. It's a cleaning product. What the fuck? <laughs> that would be a funny joke for. Sure. Like a sketch show or a TV yeah, yeah. show. But we we could never do it today, everybody. We could never do it today. <laughs> um, now, number six. And I don't like saying, I really genuinely don't like saying any of these. Retard. Yeah. Like, it's not a racial At slur. Six, it's a huh? slur. It's a slur. I feel like, I feel like the R word is having a moment also. Like, a, a, a not a moment of usage, a yeah. moment of pushback. Like in the last decade, it's been very, you know, something about Mary is like the last time I think that word was used in a Did they use undeniably that word? fine. Kevin Dillon. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, it's, it is a gut busting laugh. Well, yeah. That's, because they're yes, making, and they're he's using lying it, about. And they're using it yeah. to make fun of him right. being ignorant. Yeah. They're not the, using yeah. it. That Fairly Brothers is very sensitive and inclusive the, when it comes famously, to. Famously, yes. Except uh, the brother of Mary. Not at all, especially wow. in a lot yeah. of movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in Deadwood, he went from he's Frank's in Deadwood, and Beans, is he? He's Al Swearingen's like right hand man. Oh no shit! <laughs> yeah, I mean that is that is a cartoonish portrayal of a disabled person. But I mean, you know, so is Joe Parra's act. What do you you know? <laughs> what are you gonna do? So I put that there because I feel like, though you could argue it's not the same as a racial slur. I think it is something that people are pushing back on. And the more you push back on it, the higher the ranking is my point. Yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, uh, you know, the the uh, the and other- I'm not willing to challenge the F word advocates yet on not using the R word. Yeah. Uh, that's a that's a battle. That's we can't win that battle. I I just know that if anybody called I mean, this doesn't necessarily set it apart from any of, the, any of these other slurs because mm-hmm. I would be mad if somebody called like Ronnie, you know, a slur or something like that. But like my sister obviously has down syndrome. If I, I got lucky enough that my friends never used that kind of language around me. I don't, it doesn't really bother me when people say it, as long as it's not about a person that's disabled. Like I don't have, if someone were to call you that or me that or whatever, I don't know that it would really move the needle for me. But if I heard somebody say it about a disabled person, I would be very upset. And I guess you can say that about all the slurs. But, yeah, you know, I've I've used it, and I mean my my nephew. We've all used it. My well, nephew is, uh, you know, developmentally yes. disabled, intellectually. Excuse me, intellectually disabled. Um, so it's made me obviously a little more sensitive to it. Now I, it only that's the thing. Sometimes it makes me feel guilty when I'm writing a joke, and I'll avoid it. And some and sometimes I hate that because I don't. Not to sound like too much of a purist, but I do want to be like, I want to be able to separate my life and my yeah, art of course. in times. Um, like when Louis C.K. and role models use the F word. Right. It did make me it laugh. It made me laugh. For sure. Because it was in the context and it was... Also, I was not expecting it. Yeah. You furry. It, <laughs> yeah, it made yeah. me laugh. And and that's not something Louis C.K. does often, by yeah. the way. 
Um, <laughs> now, number five. Okay. And I apologize. Actually, number five is interesting. You're not going to agree with this because it's a little too old school and I may have rated it too high. But what do you call it when something's like da- like a ramp? What's another word for like a ramp? Like you're going down a ski a slope? Yes. Yeah. You said it. Um, <laughs> and that's for Asians. I think that's like specifically that I can't remember who that it might be Asians in general. Mm-hmm. And the last public usage I heard of it was Sensei Crease in the first Karate Kid, which people probably missed. He just says to Mr. Miyagi in his face, he's like, like basically, what do you want? <laughs> like, that's pretty fucking aggressive. Yeah. Well, that I don't think that's even the worst it's not. Asian slur. Well, there's one above it. Oh, okay. there should be, I think, two. One oh. with a G and one with a C. Oh, you know what? You're right. I, I wouldn't, re- I wouldn't have that We're one replacing. Either. Okay. The Veterans Committee has retired <laughs> Slope and is saying. Certainly not higher than the R word. And it's saying. Now, here's the question. For five and four, they're both Asian. Mm-hmm. G or C? C gets more usage and is more recent in terms of. I would say C is five. Even though it gets a lot more usage and the f- infamous Jeremy Lin uh, ESPN headline. <laughs> I, it's so insane. <laughs> insane. Like, <laughs> insane. Uh, technically made how, sense. I don't know how that got through. It technically made sense. Yeah, of course like, it did. Like, if he had not been Asian. Yeah, if it had been JL, it, JL sanity, then it would have been yeah. a chink in the armor would have been fine. Right. But the fact that that actually got through, that almost felt like somebody was making a private joke of yeah. like, what if we did this? And and was like, of course not. Yeah. And then actually somebody pr- print publish instead yeah. of delete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, really dumb. I yeah. would say that's five because the one you just reminded me of, you know, once again, I only moved to New Jersey. I wasn't born there. Yeah. The G word. <laughs> the G word is hard. Well, and the other thing that I would argue to make it higher than the C word is that I think that I think that any words that, as you said about the F word, if it is the last word that somebody might hear before they're shot in the face. Yeah. Or if Mark Wahlberg as a teenager is beating you up. Yes. <laughs> right. That's always and, a good test. If Mark Wahlberg, the <laughs> test for a slur is how would it sound when Mark Wahlberg <laughs> says it while beating you up? I'm an angel dust guy. Uh, clear <laughs> No, no, it's okay. I'm now praying with Mel Gibson. <laughs> like the fact that that speaks so highly that like yeah. he's formed this like mentorship yeah. relationship with Mel Gibson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like I've put the bad stuff behind me, guys. It's okay. My mentor is now Mel Gibson. Yeah. So I, that would be my argument for good G, argument. I agree because it, it's from Vietnam. I mean, yeah. that's like you hear it in the in the Vietnam movies when somebody machine guns a whole village. Yeah. You and know. It's, <laughs> It's not even used like like the c word could be almost comically in a movie. Yeah, Asians like using it as still joke. not great. But no, no, I'm saying, but if Asians were using it amongst themselves, I don't know that I've they, ever heard. That. No, no, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. Um, didn't the guy in my uh, not another teen movie use it? I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. I can't okay. remember every joke in that movie. But the G, the G is like hard yeah. and, and never used in anything but like the worst yes. of circumstances. L- light, lighting a hut on fire. Yeah. Mark Wahlberg <laughs> definitely, we don't know, reckless speculation, but probably used it in yes. his teens. Now we're into the big three. Of course. Bosch, Wade, LeBron. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. These goes without, these go without saying. Number three, the F word. Okay. Okay. I mean, when you're up this high, like I said, all these words you've crossed into a bad level. Yeah. Except for the Italian ones and Cracker. Mm -hmm. They're below the bad level. They're in the sort of gray area of like, I think we can kind of still say it. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. I'm sorry. That's just the truth. That's okay. F word, number three. Focus of this podcast. Um, The new kid on the block, so to speak, in the slur community. Still a lot of pushback from a lot of ignorant people of like, no, no, no. I don't mean Either I don't mean it like that or, no, you can't tell me not to say it. Yeah. Okay, great. Number two, the K word. Yeah, right. Yeah. Once again, like the G word, except yeah, has two of them. Yeah. It's, I don't know what the origin of it is, but it's hard. Uh, the origin of it, I believe, is Keichel. 
uh, which is our governor in New York, Hochul. <laughs> I, I I remember I did know the origin of it for a long time. I'm sure there's guys on the internet who could easily explain Pull it, it up. to me soon. Well, yeah, it's weird because this is the thing Just where it's Google like chat rooms origin of Jewish stuff, right? Right, <laughs> and that's the thing. Like Jew, like the Jewish faith is its own weird gray, not gray area, but like it's its own area with slurs because that's a bad one. But also, I mean, you can look at calling someone a Jew as a slur. Yeah. That's the irony of that to just be like, yeah, somebody like, imagine, imagine me calling you a Catholic being a slur. Yeah. It's just odd, you know? Well, and then you go MAGA, through like that, like people do that apparently. What? Call you Catholic. As no, they like think, a, they think that's <laughs> like they're under attack. The war on Christmas. Yeah. But I mean, that's, that's the thing with Jew stuff. It's like, you know, going back to the Holocaust, like, uh, Judah, he, but like, there's a lot of, yeah. there's a, I think the K one's the really I heavy mean, one, like he, so heavy that like, I don't even, I can't even really think of how many times I've heard it. Right. You know, you, I mean, people say a, a Jew, you for some, you know, that's, that's probably more usage, but the K word is number two. Yeah. It's, and I will say this, I have two funny jokes, but they're also so true. I remember as a kid seeing blue chips and JT Walsh. J.T. Walsh, great actor. He was in a lot of movies. Um, when 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 Nicholson won Best Actor for About Schmidt, J.T. Walsh had just passed away, and he actually gave him a shout out. Mm. He was in a, he was Matthew Markinson in A Few Good Men, mm-hmm. the guy who offs himself. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he was the booster in Blue Chips, and his name was Happy Kikendall. And I was like, can you say that? Yeah. Like as a kid growing up in Riverdale, I was like, yeah. that's his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, that's yeah. harsh. Yeah. Whatever. It's a real name. I mean, it's a name. But the other thing is my, uh, the dog that I walked when I was uh, growing up in my building, Duchess, great dog. Mm -hmm. Uh, Owner, his name was Jaime, first name Jaime. I don't need to give his full name. But it was like that had become in the 80s in New York. Like Jesse Jackson had referred to New York City as Jaime Town. And I was like, I made it into a joke. Got no laughs on stage. I was so pissed. Yeah. But I said, so... The guy who I walked his dog, he was like, oh, you can call me. You can call me Jaime. And I go, no, Mr. <laughs> Mr. So-and-so. <laughs> it will remain Mr. So-and-so. Yeah. That was Thank Abner Luima, right? Abner Luima? Wasn't it? The the Jaime Town thing? No, no. Jesse Jack. That was in the 80s. He said it. Oh, is that what messed up his presidential campaign? I think so. Oh, I thought that was during the... Um the Crown Heights stuff. Well, Crown, no, no, that Crown Heights was in the eighties. Abner Louima was a different. That was like Who am I late nineties. There were a lot of things going on yeah, in the eighties right, in New it. York. <laughs> let's just let's get to the end here. And that gets Mike <laughs> always has a, a Mike always has a way of ending the show on a real sour note. Which is so long. <laughs> Number one, the obvious. I mean, no argument for me. The N word. Yeah, it like cuts through. I don't. I hate hearing it, man. I really do. It yeah. makes me so uncomfortable. I, I don't like hearing it in any circumstance. I can't believe I ever said it in my life. I'll tell you what it's was funny just though. Awful, you know. It's made me laugh once in the movie Forty Two about Jackie Robinson. Alan oh, Tudyk. what a horrible movie! Terrible movie. Yeah, Alan Tudyk. Yes, of Resident Alien and uh, uh, Dodgeball, a Knight's Tale, and Dodgeball, yeah. to name a few. Um, Steve the Pirate. He, uh, yeah, he's he's great. He says it so many times. I was like. This doesn't even feel racist anymore. It just feels like a parody of racism. Well, it's just such a terrible movie. And yeah. A ter- terrible script. And and they just, they're like, we're just going to have him say it 150 times. And that, I wonder as an actor, like just going in being like, like how do you like pull Chadwick Boseman, Chadwick Boseman aside and like, dude, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. They're going to, that's just in the script. I have to, I have to keep constantly calling you the N word and I hate it. Like, well, I, I don't, I just, I would feel so uncomfortable, man. Sure. Like, you know, that's why I respect Leo DiCaprio for his Django performance, which should have been nominated for supporting actor and he should have won. And yeah. Christoph Waltz should have been in the best actor category mm-hmm. because Leo did not shy. Like Leo was like, I'm here. I'm here to do the part, not yeah. to worry about will this will people see me differently? Yeah. And he fucking ate it up. Yeah. Which means he's probably racist. <laughs> <laughs> DiCaprio, I think it's come full circle uh, here. You know? But uh, yeah, that's the ranking. But the point of this is no matter where you rank on the list, everybody, they're all bad. So yeah, don't right. use them. Yeah. That's the lesson here today. Let's move past so 
Um, I have a bit on one of my albums about biracial slurs because I think that's the new frontier we have to get to. Um, you know what? And we'll end on this. You know what the racial slur for for me was? I said for a half black guy, half white, per- half black, half white person. Uh, don't make me guess. Just tell no. me. No. Macaroon. Because huh. I feel like it just sounds like, look at this fucking macaroon. Yeah. It just sat, and people responded to that when yeah. I said it on stage. Uh, so yeah, this has been, uh, you know, Mike wants me to do, you know, some heavy topics for the algorithm because our audience in, likes engaging in some of this, some of these kinds of discussions. But I think Mike is like, not this heavy and not this long. Uh, you know, we can, well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it's received. <laughs> slurs. <laughs> the, the name of the episode, slurs. Um, it sounds like it sounds like Tyler Perry as Medea saying slow. <laughs> you got to go slur. <laughs> and on that weird note that many of you didn't get, uh, go to my website, check out the shows, check out Half Blackface. Please leave a review on Amazon if you haven't. Uh, but I need people to come to those shows, 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 shows. Anywhere a friend or you is near, please. JLComedy.com, calendar page. Uh, Mike, do you want me to just do the, uh, the announcer? Or you'll take over. Well, as you know, we just, we love when you guys watch on YouTube and leave comments. Two new five-star reviews on iTunes, by the way. Love to hear that. Uh, so please keep leaving reviews on the audio side. Um, we are an audio product. You can take us with you on your commute or on your jog or wherever you go. Uh, Apple podcasts and Spotify. We're in both places, really wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, please continue to leave comments. I'm sure there'll be some lively debate about this episode. Don't you think? I think so. <laughs> um, and obviously tell a friend and, um, we appreciate everything you guys, you guys do for us. I know we, we kid around here about the JL's audience, but I like to think that my audience is the audience that leaves the comments and, uh, says all the nice things. Sure. Okay. If that's what you think. All right. Now, oddly enough, one slur that was left off the <laughs> list. See you next Thursday. (laughs) That's true.